Hi, this is Penny Lane, and today I want to talk to you about entering your income into QuickBooks using either sales receipts, invoices, or deposits. I'm going to break it down for you in tip number one for my free tips and tricks video series. Let's start with the invoice form. Most people are pretty familiar with the invoice form. It's used to bill a customer for products or services that you provide them now, but they're going to pay you for later. When you use an invoice, QuickBooks will keep track of how much your customer owes you. In this example, we're billing our customer, Adam's Candy Shop, for gardening services that he'll pay us for later. If you use invoices to bill your customers, don't forget to use the Received Payments feature to record the customer's payment when it comes in and apply it to the invoice. Some people make the error of creating invoices and skip the step of receiving the payment, going straight to make deposits. This creates a mess in your accounting system by overstating your income and your accounts receivable. Next, let's talk about sales receipts. A lot of people aren't sure what the purpose is for sales receipts in QuickBooks. A sales receipt is like an invoice and a payment receipt all in one, like a cash sale. You might use it if you're recording a sale that you already have payment for. If you typically use invoices, you may wonder why you would use a sales receipt instead. The reason why you would use a sales receipt instead of an invoice is simply to skip the receive payment step because the sales receipt does the invoice's job of recording the sale and it receives the payment at the same time. It saves a step is all. You may also wonder why you would use a sales receipt at all. Why not just record a deposit? The reason is that using either a sales receipt or an invoice in QuickBooks keeps track of the items sold to customers, allows you to run sales reports like sales by customer or sales by item, and allows the use of sales tax features. If you want to keep track of items, run sales reports, or use a sales tax feature, you'll have to use either an invoice or a sales receipt to record your sales. You'll have to do that on every sale. Now, let's talk about using deposits to record your income. When I say use a straight deposit to record your income in QuickBooks, that means you're not using a sales form at all. No sales receipt, no invoice, you just go to Banking, Record Deposits. When you use a deposit form to record income from your business, you enter the customer name as well as the income from your chart of accounts, and of course the amount. It achieves the same goal as entering an invoice or a sales receipt because it does record income received by your business. And this works just fine for many businesses. Just keep in mind that you won't be able to run any sales reports in QuickBooks. They're specifically item driven, and to use items, you need to use a form like a sales receipt or an invoice. Let's get back to sales reports. If you can only use sales reports if you use invoices or sales receipts, what's the significance here? There are a lot of different sales reports that you can run. But for example, let's look at sales by customer summary. This report can be really helpful because I can see things like, for instance, who are my biggest customers for the time period? Or what were my total sales? Sales are not necessarily linked exactly to income, so I find sales reports can be really helpful. Another example would be if you were a nonprofit organization. This report can be critical to show you who your biggest donors and contributors are. Now let's take a look at the sales by item report. The sales by item report can provide some great insight for product and service based businesses. I'm sure you can see the benefit in breaking down your sales by product or type of service. In our landscaping business example, it's pretty clear what our best selling products and services were for that period. Or, for instance, if you were a nonprofit, you'd be able to see your sales for a certain period based on individual donations, memberships, or sponsors. There's also a report called Sales by Rep. The Sales by Rep report requires that you assign a representative to each sale. And this is really great if you pay employees commission, or even just to measure employee performance. These are just a few examples of the sales reports. I just want to make it really clear what you might be missing out on if you're not using invoices and sales receipts to record your sales. Another really important reason to use invoices and sales receipts is the ability to record your income in a separate period from your deposits. For example, let's say you provided gardening services to Adam's Candy Shop on December 15th, but you didn't receive the payment or make the deposit until January 4th. If you want to use accrual-based accounting reports to track your business's performance, which I definitely recommend, you'll need to record the sale at a separate time for the deposit. 
when the services were provided. Using an invoice or a sales receipt accomplishes this, whereas if you make the deposit on January 4th, you're also recording the income on January 4th. If you aren't familiar with the concept of accrual-based accounting, Penny Lane again, and I hope you've learned something useful. Deposits or items, please check out my Start Here tutorial. It's really where everyone should start, especially if you're a new or self-taught QuickBooks user. So, see you for tip number two.